Hi all, uh, today we are going to talk about the Bayesian hierarchical model. So I will, it's a long uh, notes on Bayesian hierarchical model. So I will not do it in one shot, rather I will do part by part and I will keep you posted. So this is the part one of uh, discussion on Bayesian hierarchical model. Before we jump into the Bayesian hierarchical model, we will quickly uh, review about what is Bayesian analysis so and what we have discussed so far. So when there are few parameters, uh, posterior inference uh, with a conjugate prior, you have all the mathematical closed form, but if you have a, uh, using a non-conjugate prior, you can resort to simulation method. And we have discussed some uh, basic methods like acceptance, rejection or important sampling and also some advanced method like Markov chain Monte Carlo to uh, quite a bit of great detail. So general approach to Bayesian modeling is the first you write down the likelihood part of the model. So or sometimes it's called data model. Um, then second part you write down your posterior which is a proportional to the prior times the data model or the likelihood model. If you have some well formulated uh, prior then you use prior otherwise you can use a non-informative prior. Um, then you can if you can you can use a crude estimate method or you just go to a some simulation technique using Markov chain Monte Carlo kind of uh, technique. You can use a STAN software as uh, we will see more and more that you can we can use STAN software to simulate from the posterior distribution and uh, then you just basically calculate the basic summary statistics. If you're interested in predictive quantities then basically you simulate the y tilde for each simulation of theta s by plugging it in the likelihood model or posterior predictive models. We use various simulation methods like acceptance, rejection, important sampling, Markov chain, Monte Carlo to simulate from the posteriors. So this is a basic general approach of Bayesian modeling. Now we will introduce concept of the hierarchical models. Hierarchical models are very common in, um, in real life. For example, let me give you an example. So currently this coronavirus mess is going around and we want to check how coronavirus is affecting, what is the effect of coronavirus in say Maharashtra compared to in say Tamil Nadu or West Bengal or Delhi. Now that is a state level. Then you can look into the city level. Now say for example you want to look into the Pune but you don't have much data on say Aurangabad which is comparatively very close to Pune then if you know how the model is going to be likely to behave in Pune, then you can calibrate it for the place where you don't have much data like Aurangabad. So this is one of the advantage of hierarchical model that in this case, especially when your data is coming from all over the globe, then you want to and you want to build the same kind of model but one at a very local level then at a city level then you may want to build it at a state level then you may want to build at a regional level like south india west india uh, you know eastern part of the india northeast behave very differently then you know north of the northern part of the north of delhi behave very differently middle of the country behave very differently you want you can build different regional model as well um, so and that is where this hierarchical model becomes very useful 
so suppose we have collected data about some random variable y from m different population with n observations for each population now y sub i j represents the observation j from population i suppose y i j follow f theta i where theta i is a vector of parameters from population i and then you are assuming that theta i follow a particular distribution f theta uh, this distribution and this distribution are not necessarily true this is a datum model distribution and this is your prior effectively this is your prior okay but if i theta i represents say um, tamil nadu and i equal to i could take value say tamil nadu maharashtra and delhi then theta i for each uh, location you want to have a separate parameter each state you want to have a separate parameter and so naturally these parameters are then following a distribution now we extend the model and assume that parameters that theta 1 2 theta 1 1 they govern by a distribution now this bigger distribution has another distribution called f of alpha beta and this theta is called hyper prior so distribution over distribution so you have a prior distribution now this prior distribution is coming from another distribution which we called hyper prior distribution typically we assume that the parameters of the hyper prior distributions are known and uh, but if somebody wants to be more adventurous then they can try to put even Parameter uh, prior on this a b c d these parameters, but generally we don't need to induce more prior on those So this is how it is so your data is at this level y1 y2 say y70 and then each of y1 to y1 Variable is coming from a particular distribution with the parameter theta 1, but these parameters are coming from another distribution with parameter alpha beta so this is how this hierarchy entire hierarchy is typically set up next we are going to talk about a concept called exchangeability the parameters theta 1 theta 2 to theta n are exchangeable in the joint distribution if p theta 1 theta 2 theta n is invariant to permutation in index 1 to n so effectively say take theta 1 and theta 2 and if you just exchange their position technically your distribution will be invariant to the position of the parameters that is what it means uh, informal way of thinking is if no information other than the data is available to distinguish any of the theta j's from any others and no ordering of the parameters can be made one can assume the symmetry among the parameter in the prior distribution the concept is very close to the concept of identically distributed random variable uh, but it is not exactly the identical distributed identically distributed random variables but it, this is more in terms of um, defined in terms of joint distribution now we will talk about an application on Poisson gamma model uh, this example also i have taken from gilman's book uh, reference actual reference robert all 2004 which represents the data of the number of failures y sub i for each of 10 pumps in a nuclear plant so in a nuclear plant there are 10 pumps which pump the coolant water which kind of maintain the temperature in the you know fusion in, uh, area so and it measures the failure at particular time point and so each time it has failed it has measured the time point so t sub i 
is being uh, measured at which each pump was observed so the model we are saying that why failure is following failure i is following cosa lambda i ti now if each of the failure of each of the pump i failure of each of the pump i for the poisson distribution with certain parameter if you take lambda ti that itself gives you a separate parameter for the particular pump however if you want that this lambda to be modeled separately for each of the pump if you have 10 pump each of the pump will have its own parameter then question is how we address this question one is obvious we are studying bayesian hierarchical model so we will use bayesian hierarchical model but question is why might this model this bayesian hierarchical model will be suitable so let's discuss this further I will continue the concept of exchangeability once more. Exchangeability means we can treat the parameters for each subpopulation as exchangeable units. In its simplest form, each parameter's theta j is treated as independent sample from a distribution governed by an unknown parameter vector theta. So theta 1, theta 2, theta n are my parameters and given an unknown parameter set of this I will I can do it as a joint distribution as a product of probability of theta i given this distribution parameter now we can write the joint prior distribution of theta 1, theta 2, theta n comma theta as p theta 1 theta 2 theta n given this capital theta times p of theta then the base rule you can just use the base rule this joint prior uh, this you know p theta 1 theta 2 theta n comma theta given y is a following of prior times likelihood of y and then you just model this prior this is the prior and then you can in the prior first you plug in here and then effectively you can plug this entire thing here so you take this entire thing times likelihood will give you the proportion at least posterior at a you know kernel the kernel of the posterior you are looking for now go back to this application so consider the data model y sub i as a Poisson lambda i ti to model this as hierarchical process we assume that each of the absence lambda i are exchangeable draws from common distribution in this case the gamma distribution has desirable properties so lambda sub i follow gamma alpha beta so we have taken alpha equal to 1.8 for the time being we are just assuming alpha value is 1.8 we will talk about it how we came up with alpha values 1.8 uh, for the for the time being you just assume we can assume that alpha is giving known and it is 1.8 and beta is unknown parameter so we decided to to assign a gamma distribution on beta gamma nu delta on the beta and we choose uh, you can choose any prior but we choose nu equal to 0 0.001 and delta equal to 1 so the joint posterior of the distribution turns out to be basically uh, lambda 1 to lambda n uh, in this case lambda 1 to lambda 10 comma beta given y t is posterior of so the Poisson lambda product of the this is the likelihood this part is the likelihood times gamma lambda i alpha beta times gamma beta given nu delta 
Using our trick, we can of conditional distribution. Given beta alpha y t, we can show lambda i follow gamma distribution with parameter y i plus alpha t i plus beta. We can also show that beta distribution has a posterior distribution with gamma 10 alpha plus nu and delta plus summation lambda i. Now the thing comes here. We don't know any conditional posterior distribution of alpha. That is the problem. So for the time being now we have assumed that alpha is known. But typically when we will implement in real time, when if we do not have a conditional posterior distribution known to a para, for a parameter, that time we may have to resort to some metropolis hastings style algorithm. Okay, and that could be a little bit difficult. So this is effectively there are i equal to 1 to 10 so basically 10 posterior gamma plus for beta so there will be effectively 11 post conditional chain i can create and then we can create a full heap sampler here in this case and we can simulate the for each lambda we can simulate posterior and we can draw the samples and this is the posterior mean of lambdas and it is sort of you know sorted from lowest to highest and you can see that you know this one is really large we don't know how big this is but it, this one is very large and this is the posterior mean of the beta now so we assume that Lambda i follow gamma alpha 1.8 beta and estimated beta hat is 2.39 from this posterior uh, estimate and 95% confidence interval of you know lambda we can think of from gamma alpha 1.8 and beta hat this is 0 0.076 to 2.175. Uh, now 0 0.076 to 2.17 so all these values are actually false between 0 0.076 to 2.8 but this is the one value which is actually outside the confidence interval so it indicates lambda 1 might be an outlier so that means this particular pump first pump could be an outlier and this could be a problem so in this way we can identify a problem area problem which is an outlier which needs an attention where it is deviating from rest of the places or rest of the system we can identify those problematic areas using these techniques so next topic is hierarchical regression model so i will start this topic in a next video. Thank you very much.